Behind me is Judy's 2007 Nissan Sentra with a 2 liter engine. And right there is a praying mantis. So this thing decided to die on her on the way to work today. She described it as driving, sudden loss of power, and it basically just shut off on her, almost like it ran out of gas. So what I'm going to do in this video is tell you how to troubleshoot uh, issues or what the basic steps are to troubleshooting an issue that you might have on a car similar to this. It has been sitting on a battery tender for several hours because I know I'm going to be trying to start this a couple times throughout the process and even compression test it if necessary. So basically right now it just gets a cranking with uh, with no seeming to want to start whatsoever. But it's not a super fast crank as if the timing chain broke or anything like that. However, we might have to crack out the compression tester just to check. So here's a no start condition that it's giving right now. Just cranking, doesn't look like it wants to fire or sound like it at all. At this point with absolutely no diagnostic work, my initial thought is it could be fuel pump. Because normally when you lose power, or you're starting to lose power and it seems like it's running out of gas, it's usually because gas isn't getting into the motor. So the very first step that I'm gonna take is I'm gonna inspect the fuel pump fuse to make sure it's not blown or anything weird. Actually, what I should mention before even doing any of that, we're gonna check to make sure there's no codes. I already did earlier today and there were no codes present, but that should be your very first step because codes will tell you exactly what's wrong if there is something. In this car in particular, the fuse box where the fuel pump fuse is located uh, back here in the, I mean, the USDM cars, the driver's side in the front, right next to the battery box. Uh, it's a weird fuse box where you have to kind of pull this up and pull the wires out of the way. And your car may be different. I'm sure it is if, if, if you're watching this with a different model. But the fuel pump fuse is going to be this guy, which is the third 15 amp fuse down from the top. So I'm going to pull that and see how that looks. Upon removing the fuse, we can see that the fuel pump fuse looks great, although unfortunately it's not going to focus on that very well. So we're going to put this back and run some other tests. Next thing we're going to do is remove the air filter to check for any kind of obvious blockages that might have occurred. So far that looks pretty good. And while the air filter's off, we're going to do something here and spray some uh, starting fluid right in the back here in the intake past the mass airflow sensor and crank it over, see if it starts sputtering or if it's accepting the fuel. If it does ignite, we know we have ignition and we likely have compression. Because the three things you need to have any motor running is fuel, ignition, and compression. And it just so happens I have a little bit of engine starting fluid left from another project. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in there, give it a couple of sprays. Gotta be a bit careful. This stuff can backfire. And you don't want to blow up your plastic intake. So let's see if it'll start off those fumes. It kind of sounded like it was about to catch. I'm going to try one more time just with the camera down. Because that stuff dries so fast, I didn't film it. Let's do this. Yeah, it was getting faster there. All right, well. Don't want to kill the battery, so next we're going to check for spark. To check for spark, we're going to need to take off this plastic engine cover. I believe it's just two 10 millimeter bolts to take this cover off, and then we should see the uh, ignition coils. I've completely forgotten that the intake manifold on these sensors completely blocks the ignition coils, and I don't have a new intake manifold gasket for this, otherwise I would remove this intake manifold and check for spark. I do know that there are brand new spark plugs in there, like maybe have 10,000 miles on them, so those are probably pretty good. So what I'm actually gonna do is try the starting fluid again, but I'm gonna remove this intake boot right by the throttle body so I get a better shot of getting that ether into the intake manifold. Uh, with the intake boot removed, I can spray some starting fluid into the throttle body, which I'll have to do off camera, and we'll see if it starts. All right, just sprayed some fluid. All right, of course it's gonna run like junk because uh, we're bypassing the mass airflow sensor, but it did start, it did run, which tells me it's got enough compression to go off that low fuel, and it's got spark. So that tells me that the fuel pump is probably dead. This is a 2007, so 13 years of abuse, and uh, it's only 73,000 miles on this thing, so that's kind of short-lived but 13 years is also 13 years. There are a few more tests we can do. We can take this back seat off because the fuel pump does live in the passenger seat, like right underneath there, and ohm test the fuel pump 
but I'm not going to do that right now because my voltmeter is broken, but that would also tell us if those brushes in there are bad or if something has failed in that fuel pump. Okay, so now that we've identified the issue as being a fuel pump, it's time to replace it. To get to your fuel pump, come over on the passenger side of the car in the back seat. We're gonna lift up this back seat, which comes up, and there's a spring here, which it's hard to do this one-handed, but I was able to do it. You push it over to the left, and then you toss this seat in your rubbish pile. From there, you can see the top of the fuel pump. This, these are little clips that are <laughs> kind of impossible to turn by hand. Uh, so you'll have to use a screwdriver or pliers, and I'll show you what that's like. Turn them to match all these holes to get those aligned. All right, with your screwdriver, turn these gently so they line up. They only turn one way. These go clockwise, mm. and you really don't want to force them. Okay. So can then pry this up. Might not be best with a fingernail if you could get a small screwdriver under there, which I think is what we'll end up doing. But this, I don't want to pull that grommet out. Yeah, so I'll get a flathead, or maybe not. Maybe not. Might be easier with a flathead. But under there is your fuel pump. So now we're going to disconnect that connector. And before we take off the fuel line, I just want to note that uh, if you did have a functioning fuel pump, it's best now to disconnect this connector and go turn the car on to alleviate any fuel pressure that might still be in this hose. This connector, you just kind of clip it, pull down, this lid will go away. Now also here what we want to do is clean this whole area out. So we're going to take some brake clean, spray it around, and get as much dirt and dust as we can out because we really don't want any of this garbage going in the fuel system. Now that we've cleaned the fuel pump top off with a little bit of brake clean, this is a, actually a very important step that a lot of people skip because you really don't want to run the risk of getting large contaminants in your fuel tank and run the risk of uh, breaking your new pump or clogging your new filter. So now that it's clean, we're going to squeeze this clip together here Say it's not going to be really possible to do while filming it, but but there's those two clips there that you squeeze together and simultaneously pull this line away. Of course, it's not going to focus very well. Okay, so squeeze those two, pull it away, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, that fuel hose is pulled away. It was pretty easy once I put the camera down. Uh, expect some fuel to come out of it. That's normal. So from there, what we're going to do is dry up any remaining fuel because the next step may cause sparks, which we really don't want. So have a fire extinguisher ready when doing this project. Now for the next step, if you don't have a tool to remove this lock ring, you're going to need a rubber mallet and a brass punch. This is steel because I don't have a brass punch, but you definitely want a rubber mallet because we really want to reduce the risk of creating any sparks, especially with the exposed fuel. So what you're going to do, and I recommend putting a, a rag or a shop cloth at the tip of a punch if you're going to use one, we're going to find a spot where we can secure this punch, whack this uh, lock ring with a hammer, and this will loosen this ring up. So we're going to give it a couple whacks and see if we can get this ring off. I actually ended up using this long screwdriver and hitting it from the inside down there, and that made it a little easier. But now the ring is free. We can lift this up and move it elsewhere. And now the fuel pump can come out. So just make sure there's no debris that could possibly end up in your tank before lifting the fuel pump. And if you verified that, we're just gonna raise up this whole thing here. We're gonna try to, in this bucket here, there's gonna be gasoline. So we're gonna try to drain as much as we can back in the tank. Just gotta make sure the float level comes out, but let's let as much drain out as possible. There's gonna be a little float arm there, so you just gotta mind that as you come out. All right, let's try to dump it in. Okay, now we can take this old fuel pump out and start preparing the new one. So what we're gonna need to recover, because my new one didn't come with it, is this piece here, which can just be pulled off by opening up these two guys here, which I can't do one-handed, and then pulling that out. If your fuel pump gasket is bad, 
now's a good time to replace it. I would recommend getting a replacement anyway, although this one's in good condition and the new one did not come with one. We're gonna end up reusing it anyway. To prepare your new fuel pump, that clip that we took off of here has to go back on the new one if yours did not come with my, uh, one like this one didn't. And then we're going to put the fuel pump back in the car. Inspect your new fuel pump and uh, bucket for any debris or packing material that may have gotten in it because we don't like things in our fuel tank. So now we're going to put this back in starting with the float. We're going to put that in first carefully and then kind of shimmy our way in. Dropping it slowly, making sure the wires are out of the way. And then move that hose out of the way. Making sure it's unobstructed completely. And then we are just about ready to reinstall that ring and everything else needed. These buckets are spring loaded, so if you feel like it hits the bottom, that's perfectly normal. You can kind of push that down there, and that's just another feature of it pressing against the ring. So there's nothing wrong if it feels like it's hitting the bottom. You just push it down a bit, and then we toss the ring back. All right, so we just have to make sure that when you put the ring on, you keep this fuel hose disconnected. That way you can slip it under there. You push this down, make sure this all lines up, and slowly start turning it back into place. You're only gonna be able to turn it so far by hand because the rest you're gonna have to take your punch again from the outside and start hitting it back into place. After quite a lot of hitting, we're gonna make sure that these tabs are in the center like this, and that ensures that this ring is now locked. So we're gonna go back over to this piece. We're gonna get the fuel hose lined up, these pieces sideways where the connectors are, and just start sliding it over until you hear that click. Give it a little tug, make sure it's tight, and that fuel line's back in. Now it's time to grab this cover and plug this connector back in. Until you hear that click, give that a tug, make sure it's nice and tight, and before we close this up, we're gonna try to start the car. The reason we leave this inspection cover loose before we start it is to ensure that there's no leaks. So, go ahead and turn the key. On. Yep, all the way forward. All right, I just heard the fuel pump prime. Great news. All right, give it a start. That's fine, yeah, there's air on the line, so go ahead. And viola. Check, there's no leaks. I hear the fuel pump whining nicely. Do you have any errors? Probably not. No check engine light. No. And it is running smooth as the day it rolled out of the factory. So now we can go ahead, tighten these screws back up. And remember, these are counterclockwise. So we're gonna, I can't do this one-handed because of the, you gotta put some pressure down on this lid. So we're just gonna tighten these up like we untightened them. We'll clean up the mess, put the seats back in, and then take it for a spin. Now is also a good time to check your intake boots. This one was ripped after the math sensor, so we're putting a new one in. Although it's a side note, but anytime you're working on your car, it's always a good idea to give it a once over for maintenance. Okay, so once you put everything back together, you verified it's running, you had yourself a little trip, that's gonna be it then. You, you, you're done, great success. So if you like this video, make sure to like it, share it with a friend if it might be helpful for them. Remember to subscribe because there's gonna be more awesome content coming to the channel, including bikes. Bikes will be back on the channel. Uh, strongman stuff will be back on the channel. On this channel, it's on my other one, but. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and as always, remember, keep it foul.